Hello, my fellow brethren, wherever you are. Welcome to our study today. I am delighted and I thank God for the opportunity He has given me so that I may bring to you the word of God, which is my joy all the time. Whenever Almighty God allows me to bring the word of God to us, I believe that the word of God is relevant to all generation. It is as relevant as it was when it was written. And I believe that the word of God is the truth. That's why when this study, it is called truth. My channel is, is called truth. Truth which is found in the word of God. We focus on the word of God as it is. And we allow the word of God to speak to us. We allow the word of God to minister to us. We allow the word of God to correct us. We allow the word of God to train us. We allow the word of God to correct us. And most importantly, we allow the word of God to transform us from inside out. And by the grace of God, we also put the word of God into practice. So for those who are new, welcome to this study. My name is Luke Aaron. Also the channel name is Luke Aaron. And by grace of God, we have been going through the study of the book of Amos. And by grace of God, by divine providence from God, we have done up to Amos chapter 4. So today's focus, it is on Amos chapter 5. And as we have found out, it is that Amos was a prophet who was born in Judah. Judah was the southern uh, kingdom of Israel, which consisted, consisted of two tribes, Judah and Benjamin. And the word of God came to him, and he was a prophet to the northern kingdom, which constituted of the ten tribes of Israel. During his reign, as we find in Amos chapter 1, King Uzziah was the king who was reigning in Judah, and Jeroboam too. He is the one who was ruling on the northern kingdom. Amos was a shepherd. He also used to tend as I come trees, as it is recorded. And God uh, sent him to take this message to the people of the northern kingdom. What was happening at that time, Israel was prospering. It was at peace. And as a result now, they had forgotten the Lord. They had turned to wickedness. They had turned to oppression. They had turned to injustice. They had turned to idolatry. They had turned to sexual immorality. They had turned to uh, hypocritical worship and hypocritical religion. And consequently, God called this uh, prophet of Ace by the name of Amos. And the name Amos means burden. So God put burden on Amos to speak the word of God to them as it was, it was supposed to be spoken. So Amos mostly deals with the judgment to the, to the neighboring countries and the details of judgment to Israel has been given. So today, uh, in, the, in, in, in chapter 5, we see now Amos lamenting. We see Amos lamenting. Uh, and, and in this chapter 5, we are going to learn the following. The preparation they must take, the, the preparation they must make. So they were to seek the Lord and not to seek the endos any longer. Amos chapter 5, verse 4. To wait says, for that says the Lord unto the house of Israel, seek all of you me, and all of you shall live. But seek not better, nor enter into Giriga, and pass not to the Sheba, for Giriga shall surely go into captivity, and the better shall come to nothing. Seek the Lord, all of you shall live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph, and devour it, and there be none to quench it in better. All of you who turn judgment to wormwood and the leaf of righteousness in the earth, seek him that makes the seven stars and the Orion and the turns the shadow of death into the morning and makes the day dark with the night that calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. 
So we see that call of them to seek the Lord and to live. We are going to see into details as we progress. So they must seek in good and love it. In Mark chapter 5 verse 14 and 15 says, Seek in good and not evil, that all of you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you, as all of you have spoken. Hate the evil and love the good, and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. So this is our call, and I believe this call is as relevant as it was during the, 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 the time when Amos brought this message to the people of Northern Kingdom, that you and I, we have to choose to seek good and not evil, that we may live, so that God, the God of hosts, shall be with you, as all of you have spoken. We are to hate what is evil and to love the good and to establish judgment in each and every aspect of our life. So because of the present uh, condition they were in, uh, we see uh, Amos uh, lamenting. Amos chapter 1. Uh, sorry, Amos chapter 5, verses 1 to 3. Hear all of you this word which I take up against you, even your lamentation, O house of Israel. The virgin of Israel is fallen. She shall no, no more rise. She is forsaken upon a land. There is none to raise her up. For thus says the Lord God, the city that went out by a thousand shall live an hundred, and that which went forth by an hundred shall live ten to the house of Israel. For thus says the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek all of you me, and all of you shall live. So we see here Amos lamenting because of what was going on. And also we are going to learn, because it was by sin, that they were brought into such a bad condition, so they were to repent. Amos chapter uh, 5 verse 7, All of you who turn judgment to order and live of righteousness in the earth, so the, these people ignored righteousness, they ignored judgment, and they embraced corruption. Amos 5, 10, and the Torah says, They ate him that rebuke in the gate, and they detest him that speak uprightly. For as much, therefore, as your trending is upon the poor, and all of you take from him abundance of wheat, all of you have built houses of elm stone, but all of you shall not dwell in them. All of you are planted pleasant vineyard, but all of you shall not drink wine of them. For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. They afflict the just, they take your bribe, and they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. Oh, wonderful. Glory. Glory to God. You can see all this description to the Israelite on the way they and become wicked. It perfectly describes the condition that our society is in today. And then believe God is calling us that you may turn to him. Because it would be their happiness to seek God and he, would, and he was ready to be found of them. So in Mark chapter 5 verse 8, 9 and 14 it says, Seek him that makes the seven stars, Orion, and turns the shadow of death into the morning. And makes the day dark with the night that calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. So you see here, it was, it, it, it was for their own good. When they, they were to seek the Lord, it was for their own good for them seeking the Lord. Verse 14 says, Seek good and not evil, that all of you may live. So when we seek God, it is for our own good. And when we seek God, he is found. Amos 5, 9 says, That strengthen the spoiled against the strong, so that the spoiled shall come against the fortress. So when we seek God, it is for our own benefit. Because he would proceed in his wrath to their utter ruin, if they did not seek him, so God would destroy them. Amos 5, 5, 6, 13. But seek the Lord, and all of you shall live, lest him break out like fire in the house of Joseph and the divide, and there be none to quench it in the bedroom. 
So if they don't they don't seek they did seek God, they would be destroyed completely. Verse Amos 5:13 says, Therefore, the prudent shall keep silence in that time, for it is an evil time. So that time would be an evil. Verse 7, 16. It would be an evil time for them. And in all vineyard shall be willing, for I will pass through you, says the Lord. Therefore, the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord, says, Thus willing shall be in all street. And they shall say in all the highways, Alas, alas. And they shall call the farmer to mourning, and such as are skillful of lamentation to will. So we see that day would be a day of crying, a day of disaster because of their rebellion. So because all their confidences would fail them if they did not seek God and make him their friend. They have profaned contempt of God's judgment, and the setting them at defiance would not secure them. Amos 5, 18 to 20 says, Oh, unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light, as if a man did fly from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bite him. So not the day of the Lord be in darkness and not light, even if it's dark and no brightness in it. So we see now the Lord would be their enemy because they had chosen so. So the external services in religion and the shows of devotion would not be able to, to turn away the wrath of God. 21, Amos chapter 5, 21 says, I ate and despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though all of you offer me burnt offerings, and you are full food offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beast. Take you away from me the noise of your songs, for I will not hear the melody of your voice. But let judgment run down as waters, and righteousness as mighty stream. So, so their external religion would not avail anything. Actually, God said he was not interested with it. So they are having been long in the possession of such privileges in a course of only duties would not be their protection because they are the chosen idols rather than God. They are, they are substituted the creature, the create the creator with the creation. Amos 5.25 says, Have all of you offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel, but all of you are bore the, the tabernacle of your Moloch and tune your images, the star of your God, which all of you made to yours, to yourselves. Therefore, we will cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, says the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. So we see God would really uh, correct them. By correcting them, God hoped that they would change and they would turn to godliness and righteousness. That was God's will for them. As we are going to see, these people didn't realize what God had in store for them. Rather, they continued to rebel. The more God sought them, the more they rebelled. So let's go to the study. So here we see the warning given. Hear you, this one which I take up against you, even your lamentation, O house of Israel. The virgin of Israel is fallen. She shall no more rise. She is forsaken upon a lad. There is none to raise her up. For thus says the Lord God, the city that went out by a thousand shall live a hundred, and that which went forth by a hundred shall live ten to the house of Israel. So this chapter begins as those two nests which we have already looked at. It begins with this word, hear this word. So where God has a mouth to speak, we must have an and hear to hear. It is our duty to listen. It is going to be our interest when God is speaking to listen. And even today God is speaking. So many people ignore or they, they despise when God speaks. 
So God, he tells them to hear the word of the Lord. He, he calls them to pay attention, to hear what he and to say. Because he was speaking, but they kept on not hearing. So it is comforting for us to listen to God when he is speaking. And God is always speaking. So when, when God speaks his word, it is our responsibility. It is our duty to listen to it. So it is the word which I take up, not the prophet only, but the God that sent him. So it is the word that the Lord has spoken. So here he says, Hear you, this word which I take up against you, even your lamentation, O house of Israel. So they were to listen, and they were to hear the word of God which was coming up. The word to be heard is a lamentation. Actually, because of the condition which they were going to be in, although they thought this prophet was out of his mind, eh? because at this time they were prosperous, they were, pros they were prospering eh, economically and politically. So they didn't even believe this message. No wonder now they are being called upon to listen. Actually, they thought this prophet didn't understand. It's like now, if you go to the developed countries, the, the superpowers, and you tell them what time is coming, when they are going to be destroyed, when they are going to be taken to captivity, when there will be nothing left to them, these people will not listen to you because they think that they have all what it takes to stand and to remain stable even for the rest of their life. So at this time, when the prophet spoke, these people took it as a joke. They thought that there was nothing which was going to happen. But God is God. God is always God, and God always does that which he says he will do. And actually, we know this prophecy was fulfilled. Their condition is sad. The burden of Israel has fallen. So has come down from what? To four years means they and uh, turn away from purity. They and turn away from being beautiful, being admirable. God had chosen them. God had married them. Being, and they had made them, them pure. So they had adulterated themselves. They had polluted themselves. They had prostituted themselves. And as a result now, they were in a state of hopelessness. Though they thought they had all what it takes. And even now in our society, when we look at our society, we think we have what it takes. But even as Jesus says through John the Revelator, that we say we are rich, but we fail to recognize how poor we are, how naked we are. We are people who should be uh, comforted, but we think we have all what it takes. So that is the condition of the sinners who, who, who reject God, who reject to listen to what God has to say. My prayer is that we are going to listen to God when he communicates. So she shall no more rise, shall never recover a former dignity again. So God had literally begun to cut Israel short because they repented not. It was not long before he cut Israel down. Through, of course, the Assyrian who came in 722 BC. Their princes soon have robbed them up, but they didn't. They didn't tear up them. Actually, they were the first who led them to rebellion. They were the first who led them to disobedience. So there is none to rise up, none to erupt them. So there are people who should have erupted them, but they didn't tear up them. As you see in Nehemiah chapter 5, verse 3, the city which and strong people, but they were strong in terms of military, but in terms of the things of God, they were not with them. So God's praise for Israel by death or on desertion is just a matter for lamentation. So even today, when we look at the world, the way people ignore godliness, the way people call evil good, the way people call righteous and righteous, the way people call immorality, the way people oppress the poor, the way people they have no use of godliness, then if you have spiritual eyes, you can only lament because of the disaster which is coming in this society if we do not change. The truth of the matter is, without God, the things we are facing, they are going to worsen. They are going to worsen. They are, there is no hope without God. There is no hope minus God for you and for me. My prayer to us is that uh, 
we shall accept God and live in him. Verse 4 says, For that says the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek me, and you shall live. But seek not better, nor enter into Giriga, and pass not to bear Sheba. For Giriga shall surely go into captivity, and the better shall come to nothing. Seek the Lord, and you shall live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph, and devour it. And there be none to quench it in the weather. You who turn judgment to wormwood, and leave off righteousness in the earth, seek him that maketh the seven stars, and the Orion, and turneth the shadow of death into the morning, and maketh the day dark with the night, that called, called for the waters of the sea, and poured them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name, that strengthens the spirit against the strong, so that the spirit shall come against the fortress. They ate him that rebuked in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. For as much therefore as you are trending is upon the poor, and you take from him burdens of wheat, you have built houses of elm stone, but you shall not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyard, but you shall not drink manifold, you shall not drink of them. For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins, they afflict the just. They take and bribe, and they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. Therefore, the prudent shall keep silence in that time, for it is an evil time. Speaking good and not evil, that you may live, and do so the Lord, and do so, and, and so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as you have spoken. Hate the evil and love the good, and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of us shall be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. So this, this is a message from God to the house of Israel, in which we learn the following. They are atoned of their fault, of their wickedness, of their failures, so that they may see the reason to repent and reform. You know, at times we fail to recognize how much we have failed because we have been blinded. So here they are reminded of their many iniquities they, are, they, had, con, co, they had committed so that they would repent and reform. So when the word of God speaks to you, as a wise person, it is important you accept and you humble yourself, then you reform and you follow God's way. Because God's way, it is always the best for you. So return, they might not need to ask, where shall we return? So God tells them in general, I know you are manifold transgression. That is Hebrews 5.12. Manifold means difference. All forms, you are mighty sins. You shall be made to know them too. In our, so in our reflection, when we are praying, our sins must, we must consider as God does in his judicial remark upon them. We should consider everything and then we confess them to God through Jesus Christ. And when we confess, then God is going to forgive us. God knows all the various kinds of evil that we have committed. The multitude of them, our thoughts are before him. Our heart is before him. Even the idle talk, the foolish, wicked ones which we speak, God is aware of them. In what a multitude of instances have we gratified and indulged our corrupt appetite and passions? So God knows all of them. Everything is naked before him. And how many our own omissions of duty in duty? Who can understand his errors? God understand them all. Who can tell how often he offends? So God knows how many, just how many our transgressions are. None of them pass him and you observed. We know that they are to us innumerable, more than the heirs of our end. And we have reason to see what danger we have brought to ourselves. And what abundance of work we are made for, 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 for repentance. So by our manifold transgression, by the numberless number of our sins of our daily in, in, occurrence, so that some of them are very, very, very ready to do sins. They are exceedingly sinful. Their own nature, by being committed all the time, they were committing sin. And that sin was before the Lord. It was over, over empowering them. That is a call for you and for me to realize that we need a savior desperately. So he specifies some of these, in, these mighty sins. Number one, they, they corrupted the worship of God and they turned to idols. This is implied in... Actually, better, they, they changed better 
they had sought together where one of the golden calves was kept. In Griga, so in Bethel, they had substituted the true worship of God with an image, which they, they said that it was their God who had brought them from the land of Egypt. In, that is in Bethel. In Giriga, it's a place which they chose to set up idols, in which it had been made famous in the days of Joshua by God's wonderful appearances to, to for his people. In Beersheba, likewise, a place that had been famous in the days of the patriarchs was now another place of idols, as we find in Amos chapter 8, verse 14. Amos 8, 14, it says, they, they that swam by the sin of Samaria, and they say, You are God, O Dan lives, and the manner of Beersheba lives, even shall fall. So they had converted these places, which were godly places, into places of idol worship. So human being has a, a tendency of substituting what is godly with what is evil. And now God here reminds them. Now, having this shameful in God, so they had, they had prostituted themselves. No doubt they should have felt themselves concerned to return to him. So they perverted justice among themselves. But Amos 5 7 says, You turn judgment to wormwood. That is, you make your administration of justice bitter. Wormwood is a bitter tree, bitter and a nuisance, and highly displeasing both to God and man. And this is exactly what has happened to our society, whereby there is no justice. Instead of administrators administering justice, they turn it into bitterness to God first and also to man. So that fruit has become a weed. Our wound is a weed, a weed in the garden, as nothing is more than vulnerable, nothing more valuable. That justice administered. So nothing is more artful, nothing is more abominable than doing wrong under the color, under the pretense of right. So you leave off righteousness in the earth as if those that do wrong were accountable to the, to the God of heaven only and not to the princes and the judgment of the earth. So these people, they didn't fear anything. They didn't fear God. And now God declares it was always before them. They were very oppressive. So first of all, we have seen they were corrupt. There was no justice. They were oppressive to the poor and made them poorer. They trended upon them. So they, they, they not only made them poor, but they, they, they trended upon them. And even in our society, we see where by poor are, are traded, poor are oppressed. Their land is taken, their resources are taken. Many of the people in the jail today, they are innocent, but because they cannot hire lawyers, we see now they are they are they are they are vindicated by judges who are corrupt. So they trampled upon them, they mistreated them, they became their footies too. They didn't care of them, they made them slave. The judges aimed at nothing but to enrich themselves, and therefore they took from the poor burdens of wheat, they took it by exhaustion, either by the way of brave or by usury. So even now we see that the judges who are wicked, they take the land of the poor. So the poor had no other way to save themselves from being trodden upon. Trodden here means they had taken all what belonged to them. They overworked them, they underpaid them, and sometimes they didn't pay them at all. And even in our society, in, in 21st century, we see whereby the poor are overworked and underpaid, and in many instances, they are not even paid by the rich. So God says he is watching, and he is coming to reckon all what you have been doing. They took from the poor debt of wheat, so some ruined it. It was illegal and due either for rent or for corn lent, but they exerted it with rigor from those who were disabled by the providence of God to pay it. In demanding and recovering even unjust debt, we must take it so that we don't unjustly uh, oppress the poor. So this the, this sin of oppression by by are again charged with Amos chapter two, and um, Amos chapter five verse twelve. Amos five twelve says they afflict the just by turning the end of the law and of the sword of justice against those that are the innocent and the quiet in the land. They hated men because they were more righteous than themselves, and he that departed from evil thereby made himself a prayer to them. Amos 5.12 So they take a bribe from the rich to patronize, to, mo 
to harass and to protect themselves and they oppress the poor so that he who has money in his hand is sure to have the judgment on his side. Actually, this is exactly what is happening in our country and this is very bad. God ate it and then believe God is watching and is going to rob the poor. They Thus, they turn aside the poor in the gate, in the court of justice, from their right. If the poor sue for their right, who cannot bribe them or, or are so honest that they will not, though they have it ever so clear in the view and, and ever so near, yet they are turned away from it by their unrighteous sentence and cannot come at it. Even in our society, we see even the poor, when they go to the court, they, first of all, the police, they need money in order for them to write the statement. If there is no money, they don't write. And if the poor don't corrupt them, then there is no justice. And God has something to say concerning that here. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent. Men will reckon it their prudence when they are wronged and injured to be silent and make no complaint to the magistrate. For it will be to no purpose they shall not have justice done them. So even today in our society, many instances, even when you are wronged, even if you report, it is much better if you didn't report than you reporting because there is no fear of God, even in our courts as a society. So they were malicious persecutors of God's faithful ministers. And the people, in Mark chapter 5 verse 10, tells us that they ate him that rebuke in the gate and they detest him that speak uprightly. So even today, if you stand in the truth, as I'm sharing the truth here, there is a, a high possibility that many people will ignore you and they will persecute you, which is in accordance to the word of God. Christ declared that if they attend the father, if they attend the teacher, how much more will the student be hated? If they, if they ignored the teacher, how much will the student be ignored? If they persecuted the teacher, how much will be the student ignored? Of course, much more. So they were malicious. Their heart was so fully set in them to do evil that they could not hear, they could not bear to be rebuked. Even now, there are some people whom you will tell their mistake and they will hate you for the rest of their life. So by the ministry of the word, by the reading and the expounding of the law, and the messages which prophet delivered to them in the name of the Lord, they ate him that rebuke in the gate, in the gate of the Lord's house, or in their court of justice, or in the places of caucus, where wisdom is lifted up a voice. So the reprobers in the gate are reprobers by office. This they hated. They did listen to them. Actually, we see even they persecuted them, like during the time of King Ahab, whereby the prophet of God by the name Elijah was despised. He was persecuted. They even sought to kill him because of their evil. So though things were generally very bad, yet there were some among them that spoke uprightly. So who feared God? So in every generation, in every community, there are, there are some people who fear God, who are godly. Even during the Noah's time, God kept him as a remnant. So all that have any sense of the common interest of mankind will love and value such as speak uprightly. For, for the veracity is the body of humanity. So whenever there is a somebody who is looking for good of the society and who fear God, they will listen to such. So prophet cannot dare not keep silent. The impasse they are under will not allow them to act on prudential consideration. They must cry aloud and not spare. So when the word of God comes to you, you have to speak it, even if it is not uh, in accordance to those who are li listening. You have to speak the word of God as it is. So they shall think it dangerous to complain, and therefore shall keep silent. This was one way in which they afflicted the just. So even now, in our society, we see because of the persecution, because of the evil in our society, at times the righteous, they keep silent. Because when they speak, they will be tormented. So, so that, that when now the, the, the just cannot speak, it is a way of tormenting them. Because they knew not how what they said might be misinterpreted. Even today, many people, they know what is being done is wrong, but they fear the consequences of how what they say will be misinterpreted. So through the iniquity of the times as good men are hidden, so good men are silent. 
and it is their wisdom to be so little, sin soon amended. But it is their comfort that they make speak freely to God when they know not to whom else they can speak freely. So during crisis, actually, the saint thrive, the saints, the saints grow more. Their relationship with their maker grow more. Why? Because they seek the Lord. And God requires to be sought. And when you seek the Lord, he has promised that he shall always be found. So the, the time of crisis is a good time, even for us to draw, to draw closer to our maker. They shall think if, if it's fruitless to reprove. They shall see what wickedness is committed and their spirit are stand up as pause at aliens. But they shall think it prudent not to bear an open testimony against it because it is so it, it is to no purpose. They are enjoined to their idols. Let them alone. Let no man strive or rebuke another for it is but casting pearls before sin. So the cautious men we will say to abode the reprover as Erasmus to Luther. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Let grave lessons and counsels be kept for better men and better times. And there is a time to keep silent and also a time to speak, even as Ecclesiastes says. So it is wisdom, not all the time when we should speak. There is a time for us to be silent, to speak only to God and to allow men be. That's what they want to be. Even, 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 even Christ himself, there is a time when he was insulted, when he was told to speak and he didn't speak. So as our person, as a saint, as a, as, as, as a child of God, not all the time when you open your mouth, wisdom from God should guide you to know when to speak and when not to speak. So evil times will not bear plain in dealing. That is, evil men will not, and the, and the men the prophet here speak of and reason to think themselves evil. Men indeed, when wise and good, them thought it is in vain to speak to them and were afraid of having anything to do with them. So they are told of their danger and what judgment they lay exposed to for their sins. The places of their idolatry are in danger of being ruined in the first place. So Giriga, the headquarters of idolatry, shall go into captivity, not only its inhabitant, but its images and the better with its golden calf shall come to nothing. Amos 5.5 5. So the victorious enemy shall make nothing of it, so easily shall it be spoiled and shall bring it to, to nothing. So that is what happened actually when the Assyrian came uh, and they demolished all those idols. So even the cities which prosper economically and also they perpetuate, they propagate evil, they are the first to be destroyed. When God's judgment come, the cities you admire because of their economic prosperity, when that economic prosperity is turned into evil, then when God's judgment comes, it is started there. The body of the kingdom is in danger of being ruined with them. There is danger less if you seek him, not in me. He breaks out like fire. That is God speaking. The house of Joseph and the, and the divorce 8, verse 6, Amos 5, verse 6, 8, for our God is a righteous judge. He is a consuming fire. Then, and this fire, it consumes the sinners. But this fire purifies those who accept it. And there shall be none to quench it in Bethel. There, there, their idols were, and their idolaters priests were there, who were offering sacrifices to these idols. So God tells them that when the fire of his judgment will be kindled upon them, all their guns which they, were, they had kept at Bethel, would be would not erupt them. They would not stop that fire. So all the wickedness, all the things which we own unto, apart from Christ Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, other things which we run to, it becomes empty. It becomes vanity of vanities. It becomes futile of futility when the when God's judgment come. It becomes useless. What they have got by oppression and exhaustion shall be taken from them. Verse 11 of Amos chapter 5 says, You have built houses of elm stone, which you thought would be lasting, but you shall not dwell in them. For your enemies shall burn them down, or possess them for themselves, or take you into captivity. You have planted pleasant vineyard, and have contributed out to make them every way agreeable, and have promised yourself many a pleasant walk in them. 
but you shall, you shall be forced to walk off and you shall never drink wine of them. So the law and tenderly provided that if a man and built a house or planted a vineyard, he shall be at his liberty to return from the, the wars. Actually, in Deuteronomy 20, verse 5 says, And the officers shall speak unto the people, saying, What man is there that has built a new house and has not dedicated it? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle and another man dedicate it. And what man is he that has planted a vineyard and has not yet eaten of it? Let him also go and return unto his house, and lest he die in the battle and another man eat of it. So God knew during the time of war, it is either you die or you not die. So the people who had built new houses and planted new vineyards, they were exempted from the war. They were to speak to the officer and they would be allowed back so that they would come and dedicate their houses. But now because of sin, all these privileges which they earned were forfeited. And my dear brethren, my dear, my dear saint, my dear people who, who are created in the image of God, who are created in the likeness of God, wherever we are, it is important we understand that when we reject God, then all the blessings which we have, they don't, we don't really enjoy them. We don't enjoy them. When we, especially when we are oppressing the poor so that we can en enrich ourselves. Especially when we have form of godliness and when we have forgotten the relationship which God wants to have with us. So what is not honestly in God is not likely to be long enjoyed. That is important. So you can even uh, send that to your friends. What is not honestly in God is it is not likely to be long enjoyed. You will have all that craving, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the, of the flesh, the pride of life. You will have all of them. But the more you get them, the more thirsty you become. It is like drinking salty water. The more you drink it, the thirst, the more you become thirst. So that is how greed is. It is insatiable. It is never satisfied by anything. And that is why Christ says, Come to me, all you who anger, and I will give you bread. Come to me, all you thirsty, and I will give you living water. It is only in Christ Jesus whereby we get satisfaction because Christ declared and said, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats of me will never anger again. You also said, I am the living water. Whoever drinks of me will never thirst again. So if you are there and you have been pursuing things of this life, it couldn't be anything which you have been pursuing. And the more you have pursued it, it couldn't be power, it couldn't be resources, it couldn't be fame. It couldn't be anything which you have been pursuing in your life. It couldn't be even career. And now, once you got those things, you started feeling emptier and emptier inside you. You started feeling unsatisfied and unsettled. You started even becoming hopeless. You started be feeling unfulfilled. God is calling you to come to him. Come. Come to him. He is waiting for you to come. And he is going to satisfy you. He is going to give you joy. Because in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. In the presence of the Lord, there is satisfaction. He is the one who satisfies us. It is so sweet to be in the Lord. It is so sweet to walk in the ways of the Lord. Come and taste and see that God is good. I have tasted of him and I know that he is so good. Come and taste. I welcome you. There you come and you are going to experience fulfillment in your life. Contentment in your life. The life will have a meaning. When you have Christ Jesus in you, who is the hope of glory, you are going to be complete in him. Because it is in him that we should live and move and have our being. So they are told they are duty and they have, and they have great encouragement to set about it in good earnest and a good reason. So the duties here prescribed to them are ungodliness and honesty. So they are to be godly and honest. Oh, how I pray that our society we are going to embrace godliness and honesty. Godliness with contentment is a great gain. First uh, Timothy 6, 10. Godliness with contentment is a great gain. So the duties, we ask, we, they were to be godly and honest. The application to God and justice in their dealings with men and each of them. So they are here exhorted to be sincere and devote in their address to God. 
God says Amos 5 verse 4, God says to, to the house of Israel, Seek you me, and with good reason, for you should not, not our people seek unto their God. Actually, Isaiah asked, should people not seek their God? Even now I'm asking my generation, my society, 21st century, should we not seek our God? Should we continue pursuing vanity? Even when God communicates to us through natural disaster, through natural calamity, through famine, through drought, through earthquake, through diseases which have no cure, through terminal diseases they come on our way, should we not open our eyes and come to our maker? Should we keep on ignoring our maker? Should we keep ignoring the one who created us? Should we continue pursuing vanity? How long will you pursue vanity? God is calling you to come to him. You seek him in humility. Come home. Just like the prodigal son came home. And when you come home, he is going to welcome you. He is waiting for you to come home. Once you come home, he shall welcome you home. And your life will not be transformed. And your life will never be the same again. I want to assure you, in God, there is fulfillment. In God, there is life. In God, there is hope. In God, there is satisfaction. In God, there is everything that we need. So, decide to stop pursuing vanity. Seek the Lord. Seek not Bethel. Bethel it is where the angels were. The priests who were in Bethel, there was the golden cup, which they thought was their protection. And they went to pray to it and to sacrifice it. Giriga, for you forsake your own masses if you observe those lying vanities. But seek the Lord, Amos 5, 6, and 8. Inquire after him, inquire of him. Seek to know his mind as you, you are ruled. To seek his favor as your felicity. To, to, know, to know what he has to say about you. What we shall get by seeking God, it will be our life. We shall find it. We shall be happy. We shall rejoice when we seek him. Amos, 4, Amos chapter 5, verse 4 says, Seek you me, and you shall live. That that seek, instead of you pursuing vanity, any condition which you are going through now, seek the Lord. Go before the Lord. In, in our generation, we have a tendency of rushing to the phone, rushing to the surfing engine. Whenever a situation arises, we go to the people to hear the opinion. We follow celebrities. We follow after after even the images in the name of our star. All those things will not help you. When we, we face challenges, we run to people we, instead of running to God. When you run to God, you are going to live. So we are supposed to seek the Lord so that we may live. You shall be delivered from the killing judgment which you are threatened with you as a nation. So Israel will be delivered. And even today I believe when you seek the Lord, we shall be delivered from internal separation. So you are supposed to live. You shall be sanctified and comforted and made for him. You shall live. So what, what our God is whom we are to seek? We are being given who our God is. Why should we seek God? Why should we really bother? Why should we be interested with God? Why should we not run to science and technology? Why should we not run to idols? Why should we not run to celebrities? Why should we not, not, not run to stars? Why should we not run to carnality? Why should we not covet? Why should we not have the last of the highs, the last of the, of the flesh, the pride of life? Why? Because we have a living God. We have a mighty God. We have the creator of all things. We have our, our loving Father. We have a comforter. We have a caring God. Amos 5, verse 8 and 9 tells us, who our God is. Seek him. That makes the seven stars. So even the people who run to these stars, you should realize that uh, he is, our God is almighty God. He is all powerful. The angels were and no, have no value. They have no life. They have no good. You don't have to fear. Even the witch doctors, the witchcraft, the, the powers of the darkness, they are powerless when you have Christ in you. But God of Israel does, does everything. And he can do anything at any time to anyone. He has all the power. He is all powerful. He is almighty God. He is the creator. The kingdom of God is an everlasting kingdom. He is the one who founded everything. He is the first and he is the last. So the stars are the work of his hands. Those stars which the aliens worship. 
You know, there are people who worship stars. When they have challenges, when they want to know how their day will be, they look at the stars. My dear people, my dear friends, wherever you are, remember, stars were created. Why should you follow the creation? And the creator is there. Why should you follow the things which don't speak, which don't have value? Why should you live your life by chance? And then, why should you live a guesswork? Why should you live a guesswork? Guessing of what tomorrow owns. That is why this word of God is here for you. That you recognize the stars were created by God. And this God requires that you seek him and you live in him and by him. So the stars of your God, those stars are God's creatures and servants. Actually, the stars serve God. The stars, when they are, they are bringing light, they are in their glory, they are in their best. God created them for that. And you, when you are fellowshipping with God, that should be your best. When, you want, when challenges come in your way, stop running to people. Stop running to solutions. Elsewhere, seek the Lord. Ask him what he created you for. Have fellowship with him. Have communication with him. Let him train you. Let him guide you. Let him counsel you. Let him show you the way. And he is willing to guide you. Christ declares that I am standing at the door. I am knocking. And if anyone hears my voice and open, I will enter him and dine with that person. And I will even make a home. We will make a home. That is Christ. God and will make our home inside your heart. And now you will stop being worried of anything. So the stars of your God, those stars are God's creatures and the servants. He makes the seven stars and the Orion. When you look at the sky, you see that organization of the stars. It is God who makes them to appear that way. The way they move, they are, they are trillions and trillions of stars. And none of them can collide with another because God is the one who created them, and is the one who directs them. He made them at first. He still makes them to be what they are to the earth. And he is the one who has placed them exactly the way they are, so that they are, they are, they are in order. So that is our God. He is an almighty God, the creator of all things. Actually, even Job observed this in Job chapter 38. Job chapter 38, verses that one says, Can you bind the sweet influences of pallians or lose them bands of Orion. These are the stars. These are the name of the stars. Nobody really can control them. Job 9.9 9 says, which makes Actras, Orion, and pallians and the chambers of the south. These are great stars which the Lord our God made. So cease to worship them and connect yourself to God. How do you connect yourself to God? Through accepting Jesus Christ as the way, the truth, and the life. You believe in your heart that he is the Son of God and you confess with your, with your mouth that God made them rise from the dead for your behalf. And then you are going to be saved. And you are going to have fellowship with the Father who is willing to fellowship with you. So God before, so God before he was called the God of Israel. The constant succession of day and night is under his direction. So whenever you wake up, you see there is day. And the night comes. That is an indicator to know that there is God who is controlling all that. And he is an organized God. He is all-powerful. It is he that turns the night, which is, which is the dark as the shadow of death, into the morning by the rising of the sun. And by the setting of the sun, makes the day dark with the night. And the same power can, can for abo penitent, easily turn affliction and sorrow into prosperity and joy but can easily turn the prosperity of, of those who ignore into darkness, into utter darkness. So if you are there, and you are prosperous now, and you have been ignoring God, know that God who created night and darkness, he is capable of taking everything which you are holding and within your nukta, and you are left miserable. The same God, when you humble yourself before him, if you are you are some before him, you ask him, he is capable of turning your darkness into light. It could be your marriage, which has no light. Come to him, call him. He is going to help you. He is going to heal your marriage. He is going to heal your family. It could be your children who are disturbing you. It could be your ministry. It could be your career. It could be any situation. This God is capable, provided you come to him. He is capable of turning any darkness in your life into light in the name of Jesus. So right now, call upon him and he is going to 
change your sorrow into joy. He is going to change your affliction into prosperity. He is going to change your darkness into light in the name of Jesus. So the rain rises and falls as he appoints. He calls for the waters of the sea. Out of them, the vapors are drawn up by the heat of the sun, which gather into clouds, and they are poured out upon the face of the earth to water it and make it fruitful. So it is God who does that. And the good thing of, with our God is that he does not discriminate. The rain comes to all, both the evil and the good. This was the mass that had been withheld from them of the late. Actually, as we found out, there was no rain for a long time because of the iniquities. And even in our society, many instances, in, in, in many cases, we have seen drought come because of our vanities. For all the vanities of the alien could not give rain, nor could the aliens themselves give rain. So, like, like as now I'm sharing this message, in my country, there has been drought for many years, but for the last three days, from the time when I'm sharing this message, the rain has come heavily, and I believe it is God who has brought it. So to God be the glory for the blessing of the rain. He is the one who controls it. He is the one who opens the heaven, and the rain pours. It is God that has made these things. Jehovah is his name. The name by which the God of nature, the God of the whole creation, has made himself to be known, and was made himself to be known to the Israel. So as he, he is the God of, he is, he is the almighty God, all-powerful, he gives strength and power unto his people. That seek actually renews the strength to, the, to those who come to him. He strengthens them. He builds them up. And he gives them the direction. He gives them the counsel. He renews them. So this is an encouragement to me and to you that we should seek the Lord. We should, so that we may find him. And actually in him, there is more than what we think or imagine. Once we come to him, he restores so our God restores, our God rebuilds, our God is able to repay even the time which you have wasted. The time which you have wasted pursuing vanity, the time which you have wasted in wickedness. Once you come to him, he is capable of restoring you. He is capable of building you up once you come to him in humility. So come to him. This is a call to our generation, a come to our fellowship and relationship with him. So they are here exhorted to be honest and just in their dealings with the men. Amos chapter 5 verse 14. And 15 says, Seeking wound and not evil, that all of you may live, and so the Lord, the God of us, shall be with you, as all of you have spoken. Hate the evil, and love the good, and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord, God of us, will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. So, they are told to... So it is our duty to, to seek good and not evil, to hate the evil and love good, to establish judgment in the gate and reestablish it there. So, so we note this, things are not so bad, but that we may be amended if they are a right cause. If the right cause taken, we must not despair. So even in our society, if we are willing to turn to God, to do what is good, to love what is good, to eat what is evil, then God is willing to come and help us. We must love good principles and adhere to them. We must call what is good, good. We must love to do good and about in doing it. We must love good duties and whatever good we do, we must do it from a principle of love, conditional and conditional love. Do it out of your choice. Do it intelligently, delight in doing it. Those who love good will seek it, will contrive to do it all the days of their life. They will even seek opportunities to do it. They will endeavor to do what is right with all their might, with all their power. They will also hate evil. They will avoid it. They will despise it. They will underrate it. The thought of doing an unjust thing, they will abstain from all appearances of it. In vain do we pretend to seek God in our devotions if we do not seek God in our own conversation. So, godliness, it is not an event. It is our life. Godliness is not an event. It is not an, 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 an activity, but it is lifestyle. Godliness, it is not a race which you go and perform. And then after that, you turn to your way of life. Godliness has to do with what you are in the light and what you are in the dark. 
because the one whom you serve, it is Almighty God. It is God who is omnipresent. He is everywhere. So it has to be our way of life. If we, we pretend to be doing ratios, then our God is not with us. So the reasons the young men here, this is the sure way to be happy. So if you want to be happy as a family, as a society, as a community, as a country, as a continent, as the whole world, then, then we must do what God requires us. We must seek good and not evil, that you may live. We may escape from the punishment which is coming, the evil you have sought. The righteousness will deliver us from death, that you may have the favor of God. So it is in God that we are favored, in Christ Jesus. Because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. That you may have the favor of God, which is your life, which is better than its life itself. That you may have comfort in yourself. So God is calling you and me, that you may have his favor, that you may have life, that you may be comforted, that you may live to some good purpose. You shall live for so the Lord God of hosts shall be with you and it will be your life. So it is important for you to keep the way of duty, no matter how it appears to be not important. So those who keep the way of duty, those who keep the way of God, have the presence of God with them. As the God of hosts, as, as a God of who is all powerful, he will be with you. Even if you, if you walk through the valley of the death, he is going to be with you. You are not going to fear, to fear any evil. Even the terror that strike by night, will not be for you. Even the arrows that strike by day will not overwhelm you. Even the pestilence that stalk at darkness will not see you. Even the plague, that plague at night will not overcome you because you have the Almighty God with you. He will be with you as you have spoken. He will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will be with you in trouble, deliver you and honor you. With long life will we satisfy you and so you is salvation. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So those that, those that truly repent and reform into, into the enjoyment of that comfort, which before they had only flattered themselves with the imagination of, as you are prayed, when you sought the Lord, live up to your prayers. So you should live up to our prayers, and you shall up what you pray for. At times you only pray, but you don't live up to what we are praying. We don't, we are not willing to obey. But we think God can be like something which you go and pick and then you leave. That is not way. God is a God of relationship. He requires you are 100%. He requires my, my, my 100% because my 100% was created by Him. So all part of ours should be used for God. Everything which you have, it is belong to God and it should be used for the glory and the honor of God. So as you are praying, when you sought the Lord, leave out your prayers. So, so this, this was to mean that uh, these people were praying to God, but after praying, they couldn't go and then leave otherwise. Even now, we see many people gather in the congregations for two hours, for one day, or even for two days. They seek the Lord, but when they leave, they start oppressing one another. They start persecuting one another. They start prostituting. They start pursuing vanity. They start setting other goals. They start, they start setting images. And God tells us we should live up to what we pray. So if you seek and love that which is good, you may contribute to, to the saving of the land from ruin. So it is important for you and me to seek what is good. It may be the Lord our God of hosts we will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph, though there is but a remnant left. So if, if God being gracious to that remnant, it will rise to a great nation again. And if some among them turn from sin, especially if judgment be established in the gate, though we cannot be certain, yet there is a great probability that public affairs will take a new and happy turn. And everything will amend if men mend their lives. So temporal Temporary promises are amended with an, with the, with an. It may be, and our prayers must be made accordingly. So, we have looked up to there. Uh, Amos chapter five, verses one to fifteen. 
the remaining part we are going to look at it in our next study but now the takeaway from this study is that uh, there is a call we are being called upon to seek that which is good so that we may live to love justice to love righteousness to love holiness to call what is good good and to call what is evil evil and it is for our benefit as a society to hate evil and to love good this is possible if you allow christ jesus to come unto your life if you allow the word of god to dwell in you richly if you allow the god the holy spirit to be in charge of your life in god is willing to welcome you home so wherever you are my prayer to us is that we are going to seek what is good as we are being as we have read in Nehemiah chapter 5 verse 15 14 and 13 to call what is evil evil to seek justice to seek righteousness to seek mercy to love God with all our heart even as Jesus taught in the book of Matthew chapter 22 verses 37 that we are to love God with all our heart with all our body and with all our soul so god requires 100 percent of you remember everything that you have belong to god the power god has given you the position god has given you in the society you are to seek god in that office you are to seek god in that family you are to seek god in that community you are to seek god in everything that you do and recognize that god is everywhere god is all powerful we are also to worship the creator rather than the creator. We should be willing as a society to, to say no to all unrighteousness, to say no to all unfilthiness, to say no to all immorality, to say no to all idols, and to say yes to God. Right now, God is calling you, and God is willing to heal our society. God is ready to restore us. God is ready to build us up. God is ready to give us joy. Because in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. So wherever you are, my prayer to you is this word shall convict us of our sin, shall convict us of our judgment, and shall convict us of our righteousness in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, blessed be your name. You are almighty God. You are all-powerful. You are all-knowing. You are loving. You are caring. You are holy. You are, you are immutable. You are infinite. You are eternal God. You are loving. You are our deliverer. You are our source. You are our, you are the one who reigns. You are you are you are from you are you are everlasting to everlasting. I pray for my viewers wherever they are. Almighty Father, help us, O oh God, that we are going to seek good and not evil. That we are going to say no to all unrighteousness, and we are going to say yes to you, O oh Father. Almighty Father, even in our society today, when we look at our society in 21st century, there is a lot of oppression to the poor. There is a lot of injustices also, Lord, in, in the court and, the, and in, the, in the entire society. There is a lot of hypocrisy in the life of our believers. There is a lot of idol worship. We have erected all forms of idols in our heart. There are so many things which we value more than you, O oh God. We have even looked into the creation in the name of stars. Many people have their stars which they look unto instead of looking unto you, O oh Father. We pray that, Jehovah Lord, you may pardon us, O oh Father. Take away the, the bloodiness which has blinded many, that they may not see the reality of the judgment which is coming to all sins. Because you are, you are our only God, and you have called us, O oh Lord, that you may be perfect. Matthew chapter 5, verses 48. You are calling us, O oh Lord, to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect, O oh God. We know, O oh Father, it is only in Christ Jesus that our sins are taken away. We come to you, O oh Lord. We believe this moment that Christ Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. We confess with our mouth, O oh Lord, we have sinned and we have fallen short of our glory of your glory. How oh, we pray that your Father, you may restore us, O oh Father, because we believe that Jesus Christ is the way. He is the truth and He is life. We require Him, O oh Father, to sanctify to sanctify us, and, O oh Lord, to quench us from all lusts, O oh Father. Lust of the flesh, friend of life, uh, lust of the eyes, O oh Lord, we need him more than any before. And of those who are struggling, O oh Lord, with different addiction, may you take away the addiction from them, and allow them, O oh Lord, to be addicted to you, that, Father, we may love you all the days of our life. In the name of Jesus, I speak that, Your Father, this message shall land in the soil, which is which shall bring fruit and dead food. 
to the glory and the honor of your holy name. That God, you are helping us, O Father, that you may bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, that we may have love, we may have joy, we may have peace, we may have patience with one another. May we show kindness and, and goodness to one another, O Father. Help us, O Lord, that we may be faithful to you and to one another, because you are a faithful God. May we be gentle, O Father. Help us at all times we shall consider others better than ourselves in the name of Jesus. And more importantly, O Lord, give us self-control, that your Father may not be done in, in the frontality of this life. But Father, we shall be spiritually mindful that God we may so to please our spirit so that we may live eternity because we know we should not be deceived. A man shall always live that which he saws over. The error pass your Lord, also we may put your word in our heart because we know faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. This time, O oh Lord, we, we, we are seeking you. We are living as per your ways because we know in you there is life in you there is forgiveness of sins, and in you there is security, in you there is success, and in you there is victory, O oh Lord. Take away hypocrisy from us, and the error pass you along that we may have relationship with you, because you are a God who requires relationship with your people, in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who are blinded, O oh Father, may you take away the blindness. Those who are hopeless, may you give them hope. Those who have no peace, may you be peace to them, O oh Father. Because you are the God of all peace, you are the God of all comfort, and you are the one who comforts us, so that you may be able to comfort those who need our comfort, O oh Father. We recognize that without you, we are nothing. Without you, we cannot make it, but with you, we are a sworn victory. In you, we are a sworn success, O oh Father. We are willing to enter the rule, the narrow gate, the gate of discipline, the gate of prayer, the gate of self-control, the gate of obedience, the gate of listening to you, O Father, the gate of obedience all the days of our life, in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be your name. Thanks, Father, for you have assured us that when we seek you, we are going to be found, and we are going to relent from sending calamity which is coming to this, this generation. Thanks for saving us. Thanks for the Holy Spirit. Thanks for the grace, O oh God. Thanks for your word, O oh Father. Let your word dwell in us richly all the days of our life, that we may be the light of the world, that we may be the salt of the world, that we may seek you, O oh Father, that we may live, that we may learn to do good, that we may forsake evil, O oh Lord. Help us so long that we will not oppress one and another, rather we are going to love as you have loved us, O oh Father, because the love of God compels us to love. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be righteousness, let, him, let there be righteous, righteousness, O oh Father, let, the, let, the, let there be justice in our court, O oh Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be your name. May we have intimacy with you, O oh Father. May we have personal relationship with you all the days of our life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray and believe. Amen.